No matter where you go in the world, you see the same nine things happening over and over and over among these populations that are living longer. Uh, first and foremost, I put them into four categories. The first category I talk about is uh, physical activity. And you never see these long-lived people exercising, and at least in the way we think of exercising. And in fact, as a public health initiative in this country, exercise has been an unmitigated failure. Uh, the average American burns fewer than 100 calories a day engaged in exercise. When you look at the environment, people who live a long time, they are constantly nudged into physical activity because their homes are deconvenienced. Uh, they live in communities where every time they go to church, every time they go to a friend's house, every time they go to the store, uh, it occasions a walk. They have gardens. The second category, also category you don't hear much about when it comes to longevity because there's nothing or, uh, to market you, uh, is uh, downshifting. Uh, these people have the same stress as we do, but what they have are rituals, prayer, meditation, Sardinians just do happy hour, but to reverse the chronic inflammation uh, that accumulates after a day of stress. Every major age-related disease, from Alzheimer's to heart disease, has a common root in chronic inflammation. They have a strong sense of purpose, which is worth about seven extra years of life expectancy. Do you know the two years of your life where you're most likely to die? The first one is the year you're born, because of infant mortality, you can't do much about that. And the second one is the year you retire. Three-fold spike in mortality in the year you retire. Is that because of the wild retirement party? No, I assert it's because you all of a sudden lose that work-given sense of purpose, and then what do you do next? 